Hey guys. So we are gonna go see Geometry Gardens, which is a new garden shop in our area. But because, you know, it's a shame that Sprout Home Brooklyn actually shut down. But one of the original co-owners of Sprout Home Brooklyn actually opened up Geometry Gardens, which is where Sprout Home Brooklyn actually started in this little area. So we're gonna see what their shop looks like and what they have in store. So let's go. All right, so this is Geometry Gardens and they just opened up not too long ago. And uh, you can see they have a little bit of uh, Sprout Home-esque. They have a lot of little terrariums and things like that. And a nice little variety of plants. So let's see what we have here. We have quite a few Aglionema. So you can see all different types of cultivars. I'm not going to remember every single one of these, but they have these that are a little bit more red and then you have some spotted pink ones, right? And then you have the re regular silver stripes. And then that's next to this philodendron birkin, as you'll see here, which is quite a popular plant right now. And then you have some other philodendrons. I had one of these actually. One of my original plants was this philodendron and it has more of a bird's nest shape. I guess there's some construction outside. So if you hear that, so sorry guys, but there'll be a little bit of construction noise between that and my muffled voice under my mask. This is a really lovely totem. These grow fast. Raphidophora tetrasperma. I like to say Raphidophora tetrasperma. And this is another umbrella plant. Smaller leaf leaflets though. This is Schefflera arboricola. And then that one is a variegated version. Personally, I like the Schaeffler actinophilas. Those are the ones with the larger, glossier leaves. But these are cute too. I guess it's whatever your flavor is. I should probably mention how, I mean, how big is this epiprenum? <laughs> this is insane. This is not the variegated version, Devil's Ivy, but you could see that when you give it a totem and probably really ample light, you could see how large these leaves actually get. Most of the time they're sold as like hanging plants and they could get pretty scraggly after a while. I actually just removed my epiprenum because it was going under um, some mealybug stress, stress and uh, I can't really handle it right now because I'm moving between places. But here you can see the variegated version. Really nice pots. I have a couple of these. It's a nice little take, different take on terracotta. What so is it? it? It is a type of clay, handmade in Italy. But it's a type of terracotta, but they kind of have this like chalky appearance to it, I think is quite nice. And um, lots of stones. Plants and stones kind of go together. A little African violet. One of the things that they do really well here is if you want to get bouquets or fresh cut flowers, they do a really nice job in designing some fresh cut flowers. And I'm not one usually for plants without stems, but I have to admit sometimes I like to have fresh flowers on my table when I walk in. So, And some of these actually dry very well. So plants like this and this actually do very well dried um, this as well. How do you dry them? They just, uh, you just hang them upside down and take them out of water and they kind of dry out. And that's it. And they look, they look good dry. Not all plants look good dry. Look at their Peperomia polybotrias. They're called raindrop Peperomias. They're in flower right now. I'm actually really curious if their flowers smell like lemon. A little bit, the faint lemon smell. But these have the heart shape. I actually had cut mine back because it got a little bit too big and scraggly on top. So they do really well to cutting back. And they have Mingaralias. This is, uh, could be a nice tree or shrub in your house. I like the lacy feature of the leaves. 
love this coloration on the Dracaena. It's a kind of a tricolor with the red on the outside and they have green and yellow on the inside. This right here is a Cryptantha. And they're commonly known as Earth stars. And they look very similar to bromeliads. And they are terrestrial. Some of the bromeliads are epiphytic, but these are terrestrial. I guess Earth stars probably gives away that they're, they're in terra firma. And then this is um, another type of cultivated peperomia with like the red bottoms. I'm blanking on the name now. I can't remember the name of this one. But um, it's a pretty famous cultivar. It's kind of come out on the market. These people go crazy for. So this is uh, Curio Riolena. Used to be known as Senecio Riolanus. This is string of pearls, but they're variegated. So you can see that they have this white variegation. You might be able to see it better on this one. See that? This is Hoya retusa. It's a really nice specimen. Mine has not, no, mine has flowered actually, but it didn't flower profusely. And uh, I really like this one. It's called grass-leaved aloe, obviously, for, because it has a more grassy leaves. Very unusual for Hoya, because you usually have um, Hoya with just like elliptical leaves. Got a lot of hanging plants here. So this is Serapegia woodii. This is String of Hearts. Um, very prolific plant. Uh, and then you have the string of bananas. Almost looks like, this looked almost like a dolphin when they were together. String of bananas. And then this is a string of pickles, but it's not related to string of bananas. These are all like string ofs, but they're not related to one another. This is related to this. They, they're both curios. This one and this one. The string of beads this is a non-variegated version and the string of bananas are curios. So this is a curio riolanus, and this is curio radicans. And then take a look at this Hoya, Hoya on a stick. <laughs> That's a nice, I think this is a Hoya pupa calyx. So you have this is Dysocactus anguigular. It used to be known as a Epiphyllum anguigular. So that's a nice Epiphyllum. And this is a, a rat tail cactus. I think it's, um, and maybe a Dysocactus flagelliformis. I can't remember what genus it is in now, but. And you have a nice collection of Tillandsia here. These are all the air plants. Every time I come home, I'm on a two-week schedule of soaking them. So I'm usually two weeks on in Brooklyn and two weeks off going upstate. And so I kind of know that I'm in a two-week schedule with my Tillandsia, but I like to soak them and then let them dry them out really quickly. Sometimes I put a fan on them. And then I, uh, you know, from there, leave them for two weeks. And then when I'm back, I soak them again. You got to get on a different schedule for those in order for them to to survive because I've been on a, a non-schedule with my Tillandsia and they end up going <coughs> Ruby Cascade. I couldn't remember. <laughs> That's what it's called. So one of the plants that didn't survive my time away, this dry for too long, is the Fetonia. And the Fetonia handled me being away for a little while but I unfortunately lost my Fetonia from traveling. If they're not moist, they will start to look a little bit like your spathophyllum, your peace lily, it'll just kind of hang over. So, and it'll be fine for a while, but if you don't catch it, it's just going to never come back. So it is a bit of a diva, but not so much in the sense that they are actually quite resilient. You just can't let them go for too long. Here's another one. This is, um, they usually call this Calathea rufabarba, but I think it's a Joportia now. And uh, they have these like fuzzy leaves with purple on the, on the underside. It feels like little kitties. And they get yellow flowers all at the base of the plant. 
Obviously this one's not in flower, but it's a cute one. And then of course you have the marantas in the back, which are in the same family of plants. So you have a maranta, you have a japortia, also a japortia right here. Um, this is, uh, I think, japortia and cygnus. And then you have a stromanthi. And these are all, like I said, in the same family. Cool. Well, I think that's it. Thank you, guys. Yeah, no problem. Don't really appreciate it. Oh, no. I mean, it's all part of Brooklyn, right? It, sure. it comes with the territory. Uh, what do you think you're going to do for the outside in the spring? Uh, we'll, we'll have a full garden center again. Yeah, so you'll have like herbs and things like that? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, we'll have perennials. Hopefully, we'll focus more on like native stuff, which we'll eat something edible. Yeah. But we'll see. That's great. Well, nice to see you again. Yeah, thanks. Awesome. Take care. Good to be back. Good to see you. Yeah, same here. So it was a little geometry garden. So it was a really cute little plant shop to have in the nabe. And uh, yeah, we'll have to go back in spring because I love when they open up that like back area. It's so cute because they always have, you know, they usually have seating areas right there and then you can always like check out their plants. And it's actually quite a large area. At one point when Sprout Home was here, I was gonna try to convince them to put a chicken coop back there, which, you know, I don't need a chicken coop back there now, but it was an idea. And if that were my space, that's what I'd probably do. Chickens and plants. But never chickens with plants, because chickens eat your plants, no matter what you do. Maiden hair ferns, Ludicia discolor, heck, they'll even eat your Diffenbachia. This episode was brought to you by the Kaival Ultrasonic Humidifier. Kaival's humidifier is BPA free, and it has a one gallon water tank that covers over 400 square feet of space. Now with the turn of the top, it also allows you to direct a cool mist spray towards your plants. And it's pretty user-proof too. You could easily turn it on or off and manage your preferred level of mist via the turn of one dial. What's nice about this is its slimmer body shape, which allows you to place it in some smaller areas of your home or your apartment. And it's super quiet coming in at about 26 decibels. To put it in perspective, a whisper is around 30 decibels and normal conversation is around 60 decibels. So it's silent enough to keep in your bedroom at night. And getting a humidifier like this is not just a plus for your plants, but it can also be a plus for you too, especially when our homes become too dry, particularly in the winter months or when we have our heating units on. Now I know for me that if it gets too dry, I'll wake up with dry skin, a parched mouth, and even sometimes a bloody nose, and that's all due to air dryness. So you want to keep your home at least a little humid. The units come in both white and gray, so you could find the best look for your space. And if you're interested in checking out the humidifier, you can click on my Amazon affiliate link for more information in the description below. Stay tuned for more plant shop tours around Brooklyn in the next episodes. And we've recently launched a new YouTube channel on our homestead in upstate New York over at Flock Finger Lakes. So if you haven't yet, go check it out. Channel link is here and in the description below.